Um, after today's vote, it does seem that Jersey, or the state's assembly, is turning a corner and sent a strong message out to the world that it is not secret and attempting to cover up child abuse and really does want to do the right thing. Do you think that's the message that will be received by the outside world after today's vote? Well, I hope so. Um, I think it's important uh, that once you've started a public inquiry into such difficult areas, um, this is, um, as I said today, for me it's about three things, but most importantly it's about victims and then finally being able to be given voice to what's happened to them. It's about us therefore listening to what's happened to them and then learning from it. Uh, and I hope that that's uh, what the states, uh, or why the states agreed to continue funding it. Well, you, you won the proposition by uh, a landslide. I think there's 35 for, six against, and one abstention. Some are, some are predicting you would win the proposition, but had it a little bit closer than that. Did you get the numbers you were expecting? Um, I never take the states for granted. Um, and. Uh, I know that for a lot of people it was a difficult debate. Um, I was told by uh, some of my colleagues that do these things that they thought it would be about two to one. Um, and I'm pleased that it was a greater margin than that. It was a big margin and it was bigger than a lot of us expected, uh, to be honest, which, which was a positive thing. Um, it's no secret that uh, Senator Ballas was strongly opposed to any committee of inquiry and although as abstained from the vote did speak against your proposition, this vote was seen by some as a Gorst versus Barash debate and the winner was the real Chief Minister. If that is the case, there can be no, there can be no doubt now who the Chief Minister is. Did you see this as a Gorst v Barash? Uh, never. Uh, and I've always been the Chief Minister, despite what others looking in from the outside might think. I am surrounded by uh, strong personalities, those with independent mind. Uh, some of my closest colleagues are aligned with me, uh, centrist policies but with a strong social conscience. Some of my colleagues are perhaps a bit more uh, centre-right, uh, much more free marketeers, but we work very closely together uh, and that's as it should be. Senator Balash has, uh, for all the reasons he outlined today, uh, feels that the amount of money that we're spending is not the best way to spend that money. Um, we didn't agree on that, but today we've had another meeting on other subjects this afternoon and we'll continue working closely together because ultimately we both want to have Jersey's best interests at heart. It's just from time to time we disagree on how we're going to achieve that. It's uh, good. On okay then, so can we get on to like that the children were abused for decades on this island and it was able to be covered up seemingly uh, with relative ease um, and to this day a huge number of the victims have not seen any justice. Now that the inquiry is able to continue thanks to your proposition, uh, do you believe the victims and survivors will now achieve some kind of justice, some kind of closure? Well, when we started the inquiry and we put together the terms of reference, um, I said that hopefully it will allow some victims to be able to move on um, but it won't for all because we use the term victims but these are all individuals with their own personality their own personal experience uh, and a lot of them have horrendous experience mm. um, so for some they will be able to move on for others what happened to them will blight them for the rest of their lives um, we had the uh, redress scheme for some. They wanted a little bit of financial recompense and that's what they wanted. They wanted the state to recognise them with a bit of uh, that financial recompense. For others, they wanted to be able to tell their story in public. For others, they just wanted somebody independent to listen to their story. Um, so you, the, there's not one generic victim. One size fits all. They are individuals like you or I uh, but early in their lives, uh, terrible things happened to them. And in some cases, terrible things happened to them by the state and by those people who were supposed to be looking after them. 
I think just about all the victims and survivors will want to see some kind of closure, if not justice. I'm quite sure there's not many that wouldn't want to see both, to be honest with you. But do you think this, this committee of inquiry, with its terms of reference, is able to deliver that? Well, I hope it is. Um, the word justice is a difficult one because we know that there's been some uh, prosecutions. Some would say there hasn't been uh, enough. Um, but we also know that the uh, test to get, uh, to decide to make a prosecution and go through the court system is extremely high. Um, and we used a different test for the historic redress scheme about whether we should pay compensation because we recognise that the, uh, the prosecution test was too high um, uh, for all sorts of reasons about length of time, about medical evidence and all those um, things. But if we mean that justice is that the state recognises what went wrong, listens to their story and then changes because of it, then I hope that they will see justice in that regard. Uh, there was a lot of talk uh, during the debate of Jersey's reputation, of which you yourself mentioned extensively, but you also mentioned, the, as we just discussed here, that the, the victims, the voiceless victims and survivors, they need a voice and justice and closure. What was your motivation in bringing this proposition? Now, was it Jersey's reputation? Was it for the, the victims to um, be recognised? What, what was your motivation? It was both victims and reputation. Um, I, in my summing up, uh, spoke about three areas. One was the victims uh, and uh, asking members to recognise that they have to listen to what happened to those individuals even though it's unpleasant and difficult for us as individuals to listen. It's unpleasant and difficult for us as a community to listen but it's the least we can now do for what happened to them. And for some of us, it's difficult to believe that two human being, uh, a human being can do that to another, particularly a child. Uh, but we know it happened and we've got to listen and try and learn from it. In my position, of course, I have to uh, think not only of individuals, but I've got to think of Jersey as a collective and Jersey as a whole. And for me, uh, the potential reputation damage to Jersey uh, was uh, also an important reason uh, that I want the inquiry to continue. Okay, there was, um, right, if I was to ask you to speculate, guess, let me say, um, what would you say the motivations of those who voted with you? Uh, was it because they wanted to be on, or they wanted to be on the right side of history? Were they worried about Jersey's reputation or, Jer or genuinely wanted to do the right thing by the victims and survivors and the island as a whole? It was a combination, as we heard during their speeches. Um, some just felt fundamentally it's the right thing to carry on. Others were concerned that whilst victims might currently, in the process that we've uh, gone through, have had their say, those who've been alleged to abuse haven't yet had their say, and others, again, we haven't got to the bottom of how was it that in our community these, uh, uh, this abuse could have gone on without being recognised, understood or found out. Well, that's, that was, you've preempted my next question really, because of course um, money and costs are, are obviously an important factor and the taxpayers want to know that they're getting value for money, they're not being ripped off by lawyers. And everything. The, report of the, the, the reporting of the child abuse investigation, Operation Rectangle, uh, was dominated by how much Lenny Harper spent on this or and how much he spent on that and uh, nobody was asking as you've just mentioned how it was possible for children to be abused for so long um, and how it was swept under the carpet. Uh, the inquiry is going to hopefully answer that question but do you feel that history is in danger of repeating itself and the headlines are going to be once again on the costs of this inquiry and the victims, survivors and the truth are going to be the side issue again. There's always a potential for that, but I hope that anybody that listened to the debate in the States would see that that wasn't uh, where I think the majority of members who supported continuing with the inquiry, that's not where their concerns were. Their work concerns were that we've got to um, 
not draw a line on it, but try really and understand how this happened, how it happened without us realising, and how we can learn for the future. I mean, if we look at the UK, uh, and one member said it in their speech, there's a certain politician in the UK, uh, that what happened to them um, was known by all sorts of parties, but never made public and no action was ever taken. Now, it seems incredible to me uh, that that can have happened here. We don't know what happened or how it happened, but we've got to uh, understand that uh, so that we can learn to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. But I suppose my, my, my question, if I, if I was to try and pin you down on it a little bit, if, is like, this did go on, we know it went on, we know it was, it was covered up, there, there's no other explanation for it, um, and it has gone on for, for decades. But the, the question, right until now, to this committee of inquiry, is taken this committee of inquiry to start investigating this, how this was managed to happen. Why, why hasn't anybody, including the media, including um, the law officers, if they're not conflicted, you know, maybe they should be getting looked at. Why has nobody ever sought to answer that question, how could this go on on the island for so long? Well, that's why you have a public inquiry to try and find out those issues. That's why we've got a fully independent of Jersey panel, independent of Jersey administrative function, which is run by uh, lawyers, independent of Jersey council to the inquiry, um, uh, because we, don't, we want to make sure that we try and understand and find out why it was able to happen. But we're not alone in that. Uh, as I've just said, that that's the question that communities around the world are asking themselves. Well, maybe perhaps communities around the world, you know, shouldn't need independent inquiries to do this, and and thousands or, or millions and millions of pounds worth of taxpayers' money. Maybe if if Jersey had a grasp this and asked the poignant question to begin with, how did this happen? We probably wouldn't be having this inquiry today, would would you say? <sighs> well, it's difficult uh, to say. I mean. <laughs> Actually, and one of the things I said in my speech was, um, we, when we see what's happening in the UK, they've struggled to even get their inquiry uh, set up. They've had to change the panel. Um, so I, I don't think we should be surprised that we're different from anywhere else in the world. The important thing now is that the inquiry continues and that we do learn, we do find out the answers to some of these questions and we do learn for the future. I hope we do. So I've, I've got to say to finish up on Chief Minister is um, it's an absolute pleasure for me to be able to congratulate and support the island's government, um, which we both know is a very rare occurrence. Uh, indeed, I don't, I'm not sure it's ever happened, but um, I do feel the island might have just turned a corner and you as a Chief Minister um, do want to do the do want to wrong, right the wrongs of the past. Uh, Today was a great day for Jersey, and I feel that once again um, I might be able to hold my head up high and be proud of my island. Uh, am I right to feel so much optimism? I think the only way where you and I disagree is I think there's many, many fantastic things about Jersey. Um, I hold my head up high uh, about Jersey every day of the uh, week. Um, and this is just another occasion where I think we've made the right decision. Uh, well, I think, uh, in fairness, you know, I, I, was, I used to spend a lot of time away in the UK, and there is, I used to, I used to always boast about Jersey. But since the the, the Operation Rectangle and the, the, the child abuse scandal, you know, people used to call us Bergerac. They used to call us millionaires. But now, since the way certain uh, fractions of this island have acted towards this child abuse, we're, we're still being called cover-up merchants, paedophile protectors. We're, we are tarred with that brush. Um, so um, I'm hoping today, after the, the landslide victory that you had, this will change. Uh, do you think it will? Is this going to send a message out to I, I think they are unfair names and allegations to call Jersey, um, because <laughs> Since our police investigation at Hodla Garen and these things came into the public domain, what have we seen but that we're no different from uh, elsewhere in the world? And elsewhere in the world has had to deal with these uh, problems as well. I think that what today shows uh, uh, that we can be pleased about is that Jersey is a grown-up 
mature democracy and can make the right decisions uh, for the future uh, of Islanders, future service provision and we are prepared to come to terms and understand what's happened in our past and move forward together.